If the monotony of waiting fails to sufficiently engage your processors, recall that you are permitted to activate your internal radio. There will be a lot of waiting around here. And as you can see, there are a lot of objects in here. So, we have several red herrings. There is only three articles of clothing that we actually need to wear. The rest are just there for decoration or poking around, but we do not need to do anything with most of these objects. I am going to take the advice and turn on the radio. Welcome to the Veeble Ball Grand Final. I am Play Describer, and joining me is Color Adder. This is a flawless diurnal unit for Beeble Ball, is it not? Yes, there appears to be little chance for a rust-inducing cloudburst. The visiting Melberg lint brushes have been introduced, so we have reached the chronological unit, during which it is customary to introduce the home team players. Eureka! Now I can educate myself drives. about the rules Please information that was lost when I eradicated my memory chip on the center field foul line as we introduce the defending champion Uvalsy Egg Beaters. Leading off, number 47, Palm Slapper. Now I wonder if this actually gives us some information of what we need to do. And again, you can pause if you want to, but I can tell you now, it does not tell us what we need to do here. And the first object that we need are, well, should I say, is these pair of curved plastic pads. These pads are the same length as the lower portion of my walking appendages. In the second position, number 12, Saliva Spewer. Saliva Spewer. Lovely. The pads are now protecting my vacuum attachments and holding them firmly into their receptacles. The second object are these colorful cloth strips. The shape of the cloth appears to correspond to the shape of my salad tossing and egg beating appendages. In the third position, number 18, Lime Spreader. My delicate food preparation appendages are now shielded from dirt and other airborne contaminants. The third object that we need are these pair of metal and cloth tubes. Either one of them is a spare, or they are meant to be worn on a body appendage that comes in a pair. In the fourth position, number 33, Pom Pom Shaker. They fit most ideally on the ends of my walking extensions. And the last object is this club. And we cannot enter the arena without this. Given the proper momentum, this object could be used to propel discs or spheroids tremendous distances. Well, we can enter the arena with the club and with the various clothing that we have picked up and are now wearing but if we enter the enter the arena at the wrong time we get kicked out if we enter the arena without the club or without the correct clothing articles then we get, then we get kicked out as well rounding out the top five number 29 cliche giver so just to be on the safe side, I am going to pick this up and keep it in my hand. 
Now let's take a look at all of the other objects. My incomplete memory cannot decipher the purpose of this object. However, I deduce that it is meant to be worn over visual receptors. In the sixth position, number four, Water Hurler. As I said before, there is a lot of waiting around in here. And these objects also provide numerous red herrings as we can actually wear these gloves these shorts and this rubber ring but if we wear these then we get kicked out when we enter the arena i feel the sense of satisfaction that comes from the eradication of dirt and oils I once saw a photograph of an object that resembled these. It was in a tome entitled Garments of the Creators and referred to the object as Briefs. In the seventh position, number 52, Ice Smoother. I'm not sure why we are not allowed to enter the arena with all of the other contestants but we need to wait here until our name is called and that name is Dirt Kicker An analysis of this device indicates that a range of tonal vibrations can be produced by forcing a stream of air into this opening while manipulating these valves with a great Dirt deal of practice kicker. I could begin to do better now that was very well timed and I did not mean to do that right at this moment but it happened a standing ovation for Dirt Kicker but he is not receiving it with his customary aplomb. And that is that. We go back inside. Thank you, everyone. The judges are in place, and the match is about to begin. Now we listen to all of the events that will be going on until it is ours and ours is the last one because why not it will make us wait so we wait it would be far too convenient to have our event at the beginning spectators it is time for the high five event palm slapper commences with a duet of the palm on palm interactions known to our creators as high fives and there is a high 10 excellent form the lint brushes now execute a high five now they are attempting another and they miss a serious error you cannot afford to give a team like the Egg Beaters an early lead. With the score 6 to 1 in favor of the Egg Beaters, the spitting event commences. The customary pause as saliva spewer chews on a wad of plant material. He can hold an impressive quantity of digestive juices in his intake orifice. The saliva streams forth. It arcs across the field. 49 yards. 
Beeble coach has to be minutely chagrined. Saliva Spewer has averaged 51.7 yards this season. And now, the visitors spit. Arcing, arcing, 50 yards. That will narrow the score. I can't remember what this limp rubber torus is for. It appears to have an air valve. The Egg Beaters lead 11 to 7. The next event is Chalk Line Drawing. Line Spreader follows the right field terminator as the opposing player chalks the left divider. Did you see that? He struck a pebble, but barely slowed down. Nice recovery. Both players execute their right angle turns and approach the penalty tub. Whoops. Lime Spreader has run out of chalk. A step short of the finish line. That will cost the team. The Egg Beaters lead 14 the to 12 has achieved greater as we initiate integrity. the cheerleading event. Both teams have been weak in the cheerleading event this year. Yes, ever since Pom Pom Shaker's leg joint froze during the second game of the season, he has been having troubles. Although he is only 944 years old, it may be time for him to think about dismantlement. The cheerleading event draws to a close with little fanfare. Both sides avoided overt errors. In an obscure corner of my sixth level backup memory registers, I have a dim memory of wearing this object. With the home team leading 18 to 16, here is the interview event. The Lint Brushes have completed their interview and appear pleased by their players' performance. Let us listen in on the home team. Cliché giver, how do you explain the team's success this year? It has been a team effort. I know it appears to violate mathematical principles, but everyone has been giving 106.3%. There has been discussion of you as a candidate for the annual Jawbreaker Award. Personal accomplishments are not paramount to me. My only concern is ensuring a championship for the Vildroids of Uvalzi Township. As we prepare for the water cooler toss, the Egg Beaters lead by a score of 25 to 22. The visitors go first, tossing the water cooler onto the field. A good spray pattern, one of the nicest I have seen in years. Water Hurler picks up the home team's cooler and gives it a mighty heave. Oh no, he slipped at the point of release. The cooler sails upward rather than outward and lands right on his head. His food processor unit cracks and the blade rolls away. The team mechanic rushes onto the field. Now they are carrying Water Hurler off on a stretcher. I think ours will be coming up soon. The Lint Brushes have taken the lead, 29 to 26. The next event is Zamboni Racing. The two Zambonis head onto the ice surface. The visitor executes a series of tight turns without flaw. And now Ice Smoother shows off with a figure eight. The visitor, oh my goodness. The visitor has crashed into the official's buggy. And now Ice Smoother plows into the Lint Brushes Zamboni. This is quite extraordinary. There has not been a double Zamboni crash in championship competition for nearly 30 years. Without my memory chip, I can only guess at this object's function. Perhaps it is for combing the mane of a Tribangian tree buffalo. 
With the score tied at 31, we come to the final event of the match. Arguing with the referee. First, the visitors. It all comes down to this. The visiting team commences the argument. It is so quiet in the stadium, you could hear lettuce wilt. The visitor curses the ref, but wait! He has gotten himself turned around, and he is cursing the judges. They do not usually care for that. The visitor recovers. He kicks a quantity of dirt onto the referee, and now he bumps the ref. And finally, he hits the ref. Other than the cursing fiasco, a technically proficient effort. Dirt Kicker will need a perfect score now to win the championship. And we are almost ready. We just need to wait for us to be called out. I think that I have now examined everything in this room. And now, the home team. Where is Dirt Kicker? He had better move his posterior seating surface before he causes a forfeit. I hope that you were listening to the visitor's attempt as we need to follow them. First we need to argue with the referee. Uh, I beg to differ with you sir. It looks like your kicker is commencing the argument period. Right on schedule, what a consummate pro. Now we need to follow what our opponent did but in order to win we need to do each action twice so that means we need to argue a second time uh, I beg to differ with you sir Yes, Dirt Kicker is definitely into his argument period but he has begun it in an unusually genteel style Yep, that's a real surprise. Usually, he lets go right from word one. Um, is there something wrong with your eyes? That's a little more like the dirt kicker I know. But without his trademark sarcasm... Perhaps I should summon an optician. Now he's in gear. I've seen mollusks with better eyesight. I'm surprised they don't make you wear black glasses and a cane. What happened to your eyesight? Is it in a blind trust? A strong tirade. But he may have gone a bit too long. The hometown crowd is very forgiving, but I've always felt it was bad form to end on a pun. All right, so next up is cursing. Go to an unfavorable afterlife excrement head. That sounded like a curse to me, Colorado. Yep, it looks like Dirt Kicker is sticking to his usual game plan. Yeah, take some of this. Consume me, you offspring of unwed parental units. He curses again. A very conventional opening by Dirt Kicker, don't you think? Yes, he can do better than that. He seems to be having trouble finding a groove. May your domicile always be covered with prime. May your children be forced to eat overcooked vegetables. May your children's children own a dishwasher that leaves water spots on their best crystal. What incredible form! I'm checking with the statistician now, but that could be a record string of invective for a playoff game. Well done, Dirt Kicker. Now it's time to kick dirt. Yes, the ref is completely 
completely covered. Dirt Kicker has always been a wizard with those steel tip booties. Even better than his first kick, it looks like a sandstorm down there on the field. He wasn't happy with his kicking during the semifinals, and Feeble Coach tells me that Dirt Kicker was here for six hours yesterday, taking extra dirt kicking practice. Now it's time to bump. pretty reliable on his first bumps, but watch closely. He often gets overconfident on the second ones, and sometimes he kind of misses and thumps instead of bumping. All right, Dirt Kicker, show them how it's done. There's the second bump. Excellent form. Look at this on the slow motion instant replay. Notice how he makes contact with the upper torso and draws his cutlery appendages back to avoid rebound contact. That's one of the best bumping periods Dirt Kicker's had all season. And now we beat the crap out of it. There's a solid blow to the ref's jaw. Feeble Coat must be breathing a sigh of relief. Dirt Kicker has missed his opening punch in 14 of 75 games this season. some stuffing on that one. That was a much tougher situation than most people realize. The ref was swaying in the wind, and the turf around him is considered the softest in the league. Well, we are still ongoing. Let's see if we can beat the crap out of it even more. already on his way down to the locker room for the post-game celebration. What a swing! He almost decapitated the ump! Dirt Kicker's got to be pretty happy with himself right now. The judges are huddling, and we should have their ruling in a fraction of a minute. It is going to be close. We may be looking at overtime events. The judges have issued the final score. And the Ubelzy Egg Beaters win by a score of 38 to 37. There you have it, Feeble Ball Fanatics. I have just been handed an announcement. The Egg Beaters star player, Dirt Kicker, has been invited by the president to appear on his talk show, Make My Day, this very evening. I certainly plan to tune my reception device in for that. Until next season, this is Play Describer and Color Adder wishing you a clean and sterile winter. Welcome to today's episode of Make My Day. This evening, I have some very special guests. First up, I am speaking with Sabin 3's most notable athlete, Dirt Kicker. We have the fortune of interviewing him immediately following today's big victory. Welcome, Dirt Kicker. Thank you, Mr. President. I experience great honor and pride to appear on your highly rated show. Thank you very much. And while there is a lull, we need to collect this black chip just here. A memory flashbank chip. The series information is inscribed in minuscule letters. Fortunately, my eyes, designed to locate a single piece of dust in a shag carpet, can read it with great facility. 
Okay, that's been the same description with all three of these chips. Do you mind now? And this one looks like it will fit. And when we put in the chip, we need to keep an eye out for a access number or an access code. I'm not sure if it randomizes, but I'll write it down just in case. Seven seven one seven. Yes, the code is randomized. Right, we are almost done with this flashback. Let's speak to the president. Our most honored and revered president, model mark three thousand fifty six. He possesses abilities not possible when my model was released. Ah, greetings, President. I am most honored to meet with you and appear on your popular, widely viewed show. Welcome, guest dirt kicker. I have been a fan of yours for all of my sparse years of consciousness. I am the embodied leader of the Bill Droids, as well as the host of the popular late night talk show being produced here. You are a model of Veeble Ball sportsmanship for us all, Dirt Kicker. I do not believe we have access to a sufficient number of cycles to discuss that now. Perhaps at the reception, which will follow at the squeaky clean suites. There seems to be a few problems when any kind of menu or dialogue pops up. Although your status as sports hero does have certain privileges associated with it, commanding the president to perform such tasks is not among them. Our summer intern chip handler will collect the chip after the conclusion of the show and will be duly reprimanded for his negligence and his duties. Now, I'm not sure what happens here, as he just seems to pause. Well, Dirt Kicker, 400 million Vildroid homes are currently accessing this frequency to share your reactions to today's Ball Grand Final. What is your primary response to this historic event? Do we be proud or playful? Let's be playful.
Suffice it to say that were I the same caliber of statesman that I am athlete, I would be applying for your job. Ha, ha. I would not express concern for my employment security quite yet. Do you believe that today's performance puts you in the same class as fast driver or, say, curse flinger? And does last year's enrollment affect your confidence? Let's remain playful. It gives me pause to be compared with two of the greatest Beeble Ball players of all time, but I do not need to pause for long. My induction to the Beeble Ball Hall of Fame last year firmly associated my name with such greats. Now that you have demonstrated to the entire planet that you are perhaps the greatest Beeble Ball player of all time, what is in your future? I know this is crude, but I'd like to hear what this robot does to get drunk and laid? Kind of? Is that weird to say? I'm just curious about how they operate. I intend to imbibe mass quantities of intoxicants until I am so spizzled that I will engage any willing female and pursue nocturnal activities. <laughs> I muse at your references to becoming intoxicated and engaging in sexual play acting. It is my sincere wish that you end up with graffiti on your face and perfume in your lubricant chamber. As an amateur historian, you must have a pet theory concerning the disappearance of the creators and why Mark V series has no recollection of the event. Would you share your thoughts with us? Why not float a pet theory? Where's the harm in that? Although it seems almost absurd, I often think some great calamity befell the creators right before our eyes. The event simply failed to arouse concern because we did not perceive a serious problem, such as waxy buildup. An interesting theory. My next guests will undoubtedly have a reaction, which all of Seven Three will find fascinating. Please continue to monitor this frequency. If I were a carbon-based life form, it is probable that I would experience periods of occasional irregularity. Such failure of peristalsis would create discomfort and distress. Now there is hope for sufferers of the heartbreak of irregularity. It is called Flex fast. Just one dose and your intestines will be operating at maximal efficiency. I know if I suffered from constipation, I would use Flex fast, a natural laxative to keep you on the move. Use only as directed. Welcome back to Make My Day. My next guests are by far the most honored and remarkable individuals ever to appear on Vildroid television. These two individuals have been frozen in a glacier for an estimated 5,207 years following a spectacular skating accident and were miraculously preserved to the present day. I can contain my childlike enthusiasm no further. May I present, in their first public appearance since being thawed, the only two surviving creators. <laughs> what have you done? Have you blown a motherboard? Do you know what effect this event will have on the ratings? What are you, unhinged? The management has informed me that I have been spending too many of my cycles engaging in conversation with a single patron. Ergo, I believe we should terminate this interchange. All right, it's time to enter the code that we found. And here we need to make a note of the 
recording station access code. Now I'm not sure if this is random or not, as this is the same code that I received in my test playthrough. Oh yes, we can change the odds for Bibblebonk. Which I will do shortly. I'm not going to do them all. So we can make the odds 7,500 to 1. Bung fruit? Well, thank you for that tip, but I'm not sure when I can use this. Right, before we leave. I've never played Bibblebox, but they say it's not as hard to understand as it looks. Wow, it's even loud here. Now let's do Bibblebomb. I'm going to spread my money. And even though the odds are still displaying the original odds, we will still win the 7,500 to 1. We have a winner. Zip Top Devil pays, um, pays handsomely. I will take that. Right, I will look at this video surveillance soon. But first, I'm going to go, I believe, this way.